It's about a really dramatic story that took place in France in 1976. And it's a story which is really well known in America. It's very well known, but has been suppressed in France and has not been told at all in the UK. It's about, really, uh, an article that was placed in Time magazine by a guy called George Tabor, who attended this famous tasting. And he had the brilliant idea of saying, this was the judgment of Paris. And it was the judgment put together by Stephen Spurrier, an Englishman living in Paris on the right bank. I had a wine shop in the middle of Paris, which I'd bought in 1971. And um, subsequently, I took over the place next door and opened um, a wine school, La Canopie du Vin, which was the first private wine school in France. We became a center uh, point for California, visiting California vintners, and for American wine writers like Alexis Bespolov and Robert Finnegan. And, and so I began to be exposed to California wine, and I was astounded on the quality of particularly the Chardonnays and the Cabernet Sauvignons. And so my partner in the wine school was an American girl called Patricia Gallagher. And she had some vacation in September 75, and I said, look, Patricia, go to California, check it out. And if you think the wines is really as good as the wines we've been shown, we'll hold a tasting. And so she came back raving about the wines. And so we put in the groundwork f for the tasting. I wanted to put the wines in front of a panel of experts uh, so that I would at least get the best opinion in France. And um, so we had Pierre Terry, who's Chateau Giscourt in Bordeaux, Aubert de Vilaine, de Mandela Romani Conti in Burgundy, Jean-Claude Vrignard, the restaurant Taillevent, Raymond Oliver, the restaurant Le Grand Vrefort, um, Odette Kahn, the owner of the Rue de Van France. So our panel of nine people was totally impeccable. And it was only about a week before the tasting, I realized that just to give them a tasting of California wines would not achieve what I wanted, because I wanted recognition of the quality of California wines. And so my conclusion was, even though in the best will of the world they would have liked to appreciate the California wines, they would have known that California is somewhere north of Mexico, and they would have treated these California wines rather like something from southern Spain. So the only way I could get an, an, an independent opinion was to do a blind tasting with the best wines from Bordeaux and the best wines from Burgundy. What happened here, unexpectedly and shockingly, was that both the white wine and the red wine were chosen as from California. What I was after was recognition, recognition for California wine. And because George Taper of Time magazine was there, he was doing a wine course at my wine school, and he wrote it up in Time magazine, The Judgment of Paris. And at that point, there was no way that anyone could stop the publicity. So the publicity began, and it was the first chink in the wall of French supremacy in wine. It was a shock, and there was a movie made called Bottle Shock, which is a double entendre. It certainly caused a riot in, uh, in Paris, and Le Monde had precious little to say to it. There was another repeat tasting, because when it was discovered that the French wines had come quite a long way down the list, a number of comments were made. One of them was, well, of course, uh, wines from California mature earlier than those from France. Try it in 10, 20, 30 years' time. And 30 years later, well, in fact, in 10 years and 30 years later, Mr. Spurrier decided he would do it again. And uh, I was at that tasting in uh, 2006. The very same wine from Stag's Leap actually came top of the list, to everyone's amazement. What this tasting really proved was that the differences between the very top quality wines of France and the very top quality wines of California is so difficult to tell that had the tasting been done on a different day, a different result would have almost certainly been the outcome. I didn't really know the story of the wine tasting event. I was aware of the Judgment of Paris from old master paintings, so it's quite an interesting take on that theme. 
And um, it sounded interesting, but I loved the way that Sir Peter told the story. He had a real sort of tempered passion about it. You could see that he was really involved. And that kind of triggered my imagination. And I could see images starting to sort of like formulate in my mind. So it seemed like a winner from the start to me. Just like, uh, I thought it had great potential. I mean, the idea of the supposed underdog sort of like taking on and beating a sort of long established champion sounds like a great story in itself. But the fact that there was so much personal interest from Sir Peter Michael and having his own vineyard out in, in, in California, it, it just had a great story. So every day I was in the studio, I took a photograph. So you can see it on this video from when it's a blank canvas to how it is now. And the last photograph was when it was installed on Wednesday. And so you see the last image from the studio, which looks great, and I was very pleased with it. And then it's here with the lights on it. And it was like, ta-da! It's like it comes to life. It really does sort of fit in there well. So I'm very pleased with it. It's the event. It's the event. It, 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 it captures a dramatic moment when people are surprised, shocked, and this tells the story of the tasting. It's a great story. It's well told. The tasting gives way to uh, a silence and then an explosion and that explosion is shown here in graphic detail. I think it's, it's one of my better pieces. I'm really proud to put my name on it. First thing you see coming into this entrance hall is this picture behind me, but you see it from some 15 or 20 meters away. And as you open the vista, it then opens up as this extraordinary picture that Gary Myatt has crafted and He's produced, I think, an absolute masterpiece.